kids, if you're listening, if you can't do something, quit. <laughs> just oh, kidding. Steven. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Hey friends, we recently spent a week and a half traveling Greece, and in short story, it was amazing. What we're going to share with you is a six part vlog where we take you around and show you all the places we visited, talk about the goods and the bads of the restaurants, the hotels, the travel and transportation methods. We'll also include price ranges and scores for everything like we've done in our previous videos. If you haven't already, please consider hitting that subscribe button. We're so close to 1,000 subscribers. And these videos get way more awesome as the vlog progresses. This first vlog covers our first two days in Athens. We mostly spent this time recovering from jet lag and trying to get used to the new time zone. Over to past Manly and Ashley to take it from here. What's up, y'all? <laughs> We're having our first meal in Greece. It is, what time is it right now? It's about 1 p.m. So we just flew from Dallas to Chicago to Athens. Headed straight to the hotel. We're staying at the Moxie. It's Moxie. It's got that Moxie. It's very like artistic. You can tell you can tell that they're going for like the super artsy downtown vibe look. It's cute. It is cute. It's, it's in the Marriott. Yeah, it's a Marriott property. And so we actually booked it for zero dollars because I used some points. So first set of hotels, free ninety nine. We're staying in the city center. So we'll be able to go walk around by the Acropolis tomorrow. On um, this restaurant, you know, I spent a lot of time doing research for this trip. And you so really I, did. Yeah. The only reason this trip even happened is because of all of you. <laughs> so I have backup. I have backup restaurants for backup restaurants. I think we have reservations for seven out of the ten dinners throughout the entire trip. This place is about a 15-minute walk from the hotel if you want to stay at the Moxie. It's hot right now. It is really hot. So you got to do some bobbing and weaving in the shade. I read a lot of really good reviews on Google, on Yelp, on TripAdvisor. I think it's owned by a family or something, but everybody here seems really friendly. What did you order? I got a Euro plate with like chicken and fries and some pita and tzatziki and tomatoes and onions. Sounds delicious. And Coke Zero. And Coke Zero. The big draw to this place is the fact that they make pita, they can make gluten-free pitas. So I got an order of pita and hummus, and then I got octopus. So we'll see how long it takes to get out and we'll just show you how it tastes. It's good. It's a uh, Greek coffee. It's kind of like Turkish coffee. It's got some of like the, the roughness of it. And he made it medium sweet. They're really good. They like, asking questions to make sure that the stuff's coming out exactly how we want it. Top tier. The food here was pretty good. Just take into consideration the fact that because you're jet lagged, everything is going to taste wonderful because you're probably starving. I would say that this place is probably delicious regardless. How was it? Delicious. Y'all are the best. Thank you so, so much. Great. Thank you. Have a good day. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you guys. Bye. 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 <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about the city center. We opted to stay in the city center because one, it was our first time here and we wanted to have an easy time getting around. If you're feeling adventurous, maybe try to pick a spot that's walking distance to one of the train stations. We did that. May have been a little bit overzealous with that decision because as Ashley said at the beginning, if this is the start of your trip, you might be fighting jet lag pretty hard. But regardless, a lot of the stuff people say you should experience your first time in Athens is near the city center. So it's a good idea to stay there. Hotel. We will do a full room tour later, but it's what you could expect for the size of the room in a downtown area of a city. It was really clean. And so that was a plus. The bed was comfy or we were just super jet lagged. And they do have USB ports that you can use for charging. So if you forgot a converter, you can at least charge your phone. On that note, if you forgot it, go ask downstairs because they might have one to lend you. When it's time to go to dinner, I think this is one of those you just gotta power through it situations. I booked us a table at Oroscopo or Oroscopo. Not sure of the pronunciation. It's one of many restaurants that I read online were able to accommodate in some way 
gluten and dairy allergies. I think we kind of looked a little bit silly showing up at six o'clock for a reservation. We, we started to learn when the real dinner times actually start. We probably could have walked from the hotel there, but Ashley was looking so cute. Look at her, look at her in this clip. So I couldn't just let her walk like that. <laughs> so we ended up calling an Uber and it was like $4.70. They brought out a soup course as a little amuse-bouche. A lot of the restaurants we went to offered some type of Chinese appetizer thingy at the start of your meal and dessert. I not to laugh because I just kept thinking amuse-bouche. Amuse-bouche. <laughs> it's kind of a funny word. <laughs> Isn't it French? Yeah. Don't you speak French? I can read and write French. I'm not good at speaking it. That's why I switched my minor in college. Kids, if you're listening, if you can't do something, Quit. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Manly. <laughs> they also brought out some olive tapenade and they brought out some bread. I can't have the bread, so I asked for some cucumbers and they brought me a cucumbers and I dipped it. It was good. It was pretty decent. Your allergies make it really hard sometimes. Mm -hmm. and people are so nervous about making you sick and so they're like afraid to <laughs> try too many things. But my food was good. So probably if you don't have too many food restrictions, you should find something you like there. Yeah. This is pretty standard to bring something small before and something after. A lot of the restaurants were doing it and we pretty much loved it. It was a nice little surprise because we weren't expecting it. It was about 7 p.m. when we finished and we were just running on fumes and we had a lot of stuff to do the next day. And so we just packed it up and went to the hotel. And this was our total for the day. I'll put it somewhere on the screen. Time for day two, a day around Athens and the Acropolis. On day two, we basically made a giant circle of some of the major tourist attractions in Athens. It is almost nine o'clock and we are still in the hotel. The original plan was to do a Acropolis tour and get there at 8 a.m. We had grand plans of waking up at like 5.30 or six, getting ready, going and eating breakfast. Okay, Ashley was not gonna wake up at 5.30. But I woke up at 8.30 and looked at my phone and said, Ashley, it's 8.30. So we're gonna reorganize the day. Just went down and got coffee from the lobby. We'll get some breakfast and get the day started. If you're staying at the Moxie, they have a breakfast that is either included in your room rate or if it's not, you can pay for it separately. And so that's where we started. We just fueled up and got ready to get our walk on. At the base of Monastavaki, there is a flea market that happens. I think it's every Sunday. And so we went to go check that out. There are shops there, but I think the flea market is additive to those shops. And there are lots of really cool things, people selling like little trinkets. Basically, you can find anything and everything you might be looking for there. It's for you. <laughs> Hello, it's a nice one. Yes. Yeah, yeah. okay. Looks good <laughs> on you. <laughs> okay. Hello, my friend. Hello. <laughs> good morning. Good morning to you. <laughs> I actually really regret that we didn't buy more stuff here. I wish we had done all of our souvenir and gift shopping at this flea market. I just expected that it would be like pretty much everywhere else we've traveled, that there would be other shops like this pretty much everywhere we went and there just wasn't. So if you're looking for any really specific gifts for people or any souvenirs for yourself, definitely recommend just going ahead and buying them. Even if it's the beginning of your trip, this is probably the best selection you're gonna find. Once you've had your fill of the flea market, you can start the walk over to Viganaki. It's about a 15 minute walk and there are plenty of things that you can see on the way there. We are at a restaurant called Viganaki here in Athens and it is all gluten free and all vegan, which is important to us because Manly is allergic to milk. And so now we didn't have to ask every single item, does it have milk, does it have gluten? Because they're all milk and gluten free. So like Ashley said, this place is entirely vegan and gluten-free, which is paradise for me. And so we ordered some hummus. We got a cheese pita pocket thing. <laughs> we got a Greek pizza. And I also got this frappe with oat milk. Delish, definitely delish. I will honestly say that if you did not tell me this food was vegan, I wouldn't be able to tell. Everything was extremely delicious. The only thing I wish they would have had was like some salt and pepper to put on the pizza. But other than that, thumbs up. What up? Audio guides that you can do on this self-guided tour. It was 20 euros to get two general admission tickets. They do offer 
like discounted things for students if you show them like your university pass, etc. We're not going to stop at each one of the stations, but we do want to do a quick lap and check this out. This is the oldest, the only all marble and granite stadium in the entire world. This stadium is also where the first modern day Olympics took place, which is pretty crazy when you think about it. Like we were running, I was running where the first modern day Olympics took place. As a former track athlete, it makes me so happy. But if you have any old scores that you need to settle, you can take it to the track. It could be the 400 or the 800. This person knows who I'm talking to. I will send them this clip and they will know exactly who I'm talking to. There's so much history in here. I'm not gonna rob you of it and show you everything, but you could probably spend 30 to 45 minutes reading everything in here. And they also have a gift shop that I visited, picked something up for myself. When you think about unique gifts, just the location where you bought this from takes it up a notch. Ashley found this next thing. I just stood in the sun and recorded. So I'm going to let her explain. <laughs> There's a lot of backstory to kind of why this ceremony takes place. So we'll link to a wiki article in the description, but definitely stop by if you can. It was really interesting to watch. Even if you can only watch for a few minutes, there were people kind of coming and going throughout them doing the changing of the guard. They do it at the top of every hour. And I think Sundays at 11, they do like a bigger version with a whole parade and stuff. So it was really cool. This next one is definitely a must see when you're in Athens. I don't care if Someone has a weird opinion that this is too touristy, but the Acropolis is awesome. We actually have a short that they posted on the profile that explains like the best way to do this. We'll still talk a little bit about it here, but you should go check that one out. Either go in the morning or go later in the evening so that you can avoid the cruise ship crowds. And with this being a very popular destination, when they get dropped off, they probably have some sort of excursion booked to check out the Acropolis. Ashley did a lot of good research the day before and found the best times to go. And so we went around 5 or 5.30 and went to the museum first, which was included in our combo ticket. And we spent about 45 minutes there. And then once six-ish rolled around, we went and started walking up the Acropolis. And with our combo ticket, an audio tour was given. We started with that, but then ended up turning it off because we had a lot of recordings and we could just go back and listen to the audio <laughs> later. When you get to the top, definitely just stop, take it in, and then get your cool pictures. I got some really cool pictures of her. If you don't want to take your pictures up there, there is a little hill at the base where a lot of people go to watch the sunset and then the Acropolis is in the background. It looks really cool. You can get some extremely artistic photos there as well. So we stopped there on our way to dinner. Artiste. 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 We were at Greek Stories. We just finished an awesome walk of the Acropolis. We just finished an awesome walk of the... We just finished an awesome walk of the Acropolis. Oh my gosh. We just finished visiting the Acropolis and it was so awesome. We got to see like the sunset almost completely. But this restaurant, the entire menu is gluten free. And so they made this place specifically for people who have celiac. So if you are allergic to any sort of gluten, great place to come. We ordered a couple of glasses of the house wine. We also ordered the fried squid because usually it's breaded so I can't get it. But Yo, we're about to eat some fried squid. One thing, the uh, vegan masaka is not actually vegan. They use goat cheese, so was not able to have that, but ended up settling on getting the seafood spaghetti. And so we'll see how that tastes. And then Ashley ordered the masaka. So all that should be coming out soon. And we'll just let you know how it tastes and give it our score. That's really good. <laughs> The color is extremely good. It's creamy? It tastes extremely good. Oh. You know how like sometimes gluten-free pasta just tastes like cardboard? It just tastes like pasta. And then like they didn't just hide it with the tomato sauce. Like, I don't know, whatever they mixed in there. It was good. All in all, we probably rate this place a four out of five across the board. If you can get a patio table, you probably should get that. We were right by the door, and so there was like a lot going on. It was because we didn't make a reservation, which is usually uh, the problem we run into. But we only did that one time on this trip. Yeah. You made all the reservations other than that. We even canceled a reservation. Mm -hmm. We had so many reservations. <laughs> and that's why you make a reservation. And that's why you don't teach your father a lesson. Who's the stupid one now? So wow, it's already 
time to go on the next part of our Greek adventure. We popped into the airport, got through security pretty quickly, and we were able to check out one of the lounges that our credit card gives us access to. And we'll talk a little bit more about our credit card, not sponsored, later, and how it helped us on this trip. Not sponsored, but you know, if you're accepting uh, applications, Chase, I, I would you know, be interested. Chase, uh, <laughs> we're here. Next up is Santorini. Hopefully I have this thing edited in a few weeks, but it's not my full-time job, so. It's not even like my second or third. This is like my fourth job, but I gave it a shot. Star <laughs> I don't give a shot. We hope that this video helped you decide whether or not Athens is worth a trip for you. This is how much we spent over the course of two days. Now, make sure you hit that subscription button because Santorini's like the real start of this trip and it's just gonna get more awesome from there. Hope you have a fantastic day, and remember, we take the trip. So you can decide whether or not you want to. <laughs> Bye. Bye. You're not a Carlo, right? Absolutely no way you made Carlo. He's a Remy. You're a Remy. Captain Remy, wait, we're just gonna do the French pet cocoa, that shit, yeah. The Remington, don't make him.